So this video is hopefully going to be quick and I'm not going to go too much off on a rant. Uh, but it's in a reply. I've been meaning to do this for a while now. Uh, I did a video not too long ago called Why Antivirus Sucks. And surprisingly, a lot of people agreed with me. But there are still some people who just don't get it. So I want to uh, address some of the questions. And some of them were good questions. Some of them were just ridiculous. Um, one of the good questions is people ask, well, what, if, what if I have kids and my kids use my computer? Uh, well, I, you know... I have two kids, uh, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. One-year-old obviously isn't using the computer yet. Um, but in reply to that, I'll say, one, my kids don't use my computer. They have their own, which some people seem surprised by. But it's so easy. I, it's not like I bought her a computer. People get rid of old computers all the time that are still great, and hers isn't even that old. Or, you know, you just upgrade and you have your old computer. So that, that's a simple solution is just give the kids their own computer. But even beyond that... Uh, if my kid used my computer, they wouldn't be a root user. They wouldn't be able to install software. They'd only be able to run it, and in which case, on a Linux system, they'd have to download it, change the permissions on the, on the file to make it executable. Uh, and even if they did do that, my personal files would still be protected. Uh, and so basically what I'm saying by that is, one, if your kid knows enough how to download and change permissions on a file, they should be wise enough to know not to download programs and do that. Uh, and even if they did, they're not administrators, so they shouldn't have access to other people's files. Now, again, if you install, if your system's not secure, if you download a file that roots your system and gain, gets uh, root access, uh, that, that's not a malicious software problem. That's a flaw in your system, and that needs to be upgraded. And uh, again, this isn't really supposed to be a Linux versus Windows setup, but if a security flaw in your system like that is found, antivirus can't do anything. It's called a zero-day attack. And that's why it's called a zero-day attack, because there's no defense against it, because it, it was just discovered. Once it's discovered, and this is going to be kind of the ongoing thing with pretty much all the arguments, is if there's a security flaw in your system, and that system is not, or that, that security flaw is not known publicly yet, then antivirus isn't going to stop it. And if it is known publicly, upgrading your software should patch that, that hole. So that's not an issue. Um, now, let's say that is an issue. Uh, I'm also not concerned about a system getting in there and deleting files because there should be nothing on my system that's of importance that isn't backed up somewhere immediately. So my more, more of my concern is it getting in and, and stealing files. Um, and the simple solution to that is just encrypt your home directory, uh, encrypt your whole computer, but especially your home directory different than other people's. So let's say you had another user on there and they did get infected and they did have a zero day attack. They got root access. So now they can access your files. Well, they can't if you encrypted and you made sure you locked your files before you left. So that's a simple solution to that. And if it gets root, yeah, it could always wipe out your hard drive. But again, you shouldn't have anything backed up, you have anything on your system that isn't backed up somewhere else that is of importance. Um, and again, your kids shouldn't have the permissions to be able to do that sort of stuff. And my kids, my daughter, we monitor what she does. If your kid's so young they don't know how to handle a system like that, they need to be monitored, my opinion. You may disagree. And if they're older, they should be smart enough to know not to download stuff like that. Okay, moving on. Someone goes... Uh, yeah, what about if you're, you're pirating stuff? Okay, don't pirate software. <laughs> uh, they said, what about PDFs, Excel files, uh, MP3s? Well, those aren't executable stuff. Uh, any of those things, there have been some security holes, but they aren't in those files directly. They're in the programs you use. So Adobe might have a flaw in their system, or Microsoft Office might have a flaw in their system, that flaw should be patched. Again, if that flaw is known, it should be patched. And if it isn't known, antivirus isn't going to know about it and be able to stop it. It's the same thing over and over again. Antivirus can't defend your system unless it knows what it's defending against. And if it's defending against something uh, that's a flaw in your system, the system should be patched. So again, that's, that's the, the ongoing thing. Uh, malicious software, again, if you download something and you have permission to do something and you give that program permission to run, 
then yeah, but that's your choice. Again, if it's not executable, if it's like a PDF or a Word document or Excel document with a macro in it and your office software has a flaw that allows those macros to run and make changes to your system, you need to either upgrade that software or change your office software. Now, I was also going to ask uh, people, because a lot of people go, oh, what about uh, if you're online, you're vulnerable, which is kind of true. Hold on one second here. Decline call. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, the, ch the odds of you getting malicious software from a just a regular website it, my phone's probably going to ring here in a second, uh, is, is highly unlikely if you're not using external plugins like Flash or Java. Uh, if you're just going to a system that has scripts, you can obviously use script blockers, that's a different thing. Um, but again, for even with Flash, which has lots of flaws in it, which is why I block it on my system, um, but if it comes to like JavaScript, your browser decodes that. If your browser has some sort of flaw that allows JavaScript to change files on your actual system, that's a flaw in your browser. Once it's known, it should be patched and you should be able to upgrade. If it's not known, then antivirus again isn't going to help you because they are unaware of it. It's, it's the same thing over and over again. Um, and I'll just ask you, so, so as an example, I'm, I'm going to ask if any of you know of a malicious website that will supposedly infect my system just by going to it, put a link in the comments and I will go and check out that site and, and prove to you that you know, I'm not concerned whatsoever. Uh, I did have someone uh, comment and say, oh, but you go to websites and it'll pop up. Uh, he's talking about pop-ups. I'm like, well, that's a pop-up, not malicious software. I mean, I guess you can consider pop-ups malicious software, but most browsers nowadays block pop-ups automatically and they're not going to affect your system. Then he replied, oh, well, um, you get ones that pop up and say, oh, your system is infected. You know, you have to download antivirus software to get rid of it. That's not real. That's trying to trick you into installing malicious software, which is my whole point that you don't install stuff like that. Again, if you're on Linux, use a, a distro you trust and use their repositories and try not to go outside of that. Occasionally you might have to, but very, very rarely if you have a good distribution. Um, but the pop-up itself is not malicious software. Now, uh, someone did put a link inside the comments uh, to the original video, and I clicked on it, no problem, right? So I click on it, and Firefox, where am I going? Right here. Let me turn the camera around. Okay. Firefox brought this message, obviously, I even clicked, you know, ignore this warning, and it, cont and it still blocked it. So even to get to that site, and again, I'm not concerned, uh, but I, to get to that site, I decided okay, I have to install another browser that may not have as much protection. So again, my browser is protecting me here, right? I, I installed a Dil Dillo, I think is how you say it. So finally, I got to the website, which has this little image here, and I'm not at all concerned that this this has gotten to my system at all. Uh, if I click on that, then it wants me to download a, a raw file, which is like a zip file. Now, maybe there's malicious software in there, but this website doesn't do anything to my computer. I can almost guarantee, oh no, I can guarantee that. Um, I'll look through the code on the site, uh, but I, I can tell you right now, it's not affecting my system in the least. I'm not concerned. So, go ahead and focus here. If you think you have a website that's going to infect my system, put a link in the description and I will check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching. And so yeah, that's the challenge. Give me a link. Give me a link that will just infect my system by going to a website. I don't have Flash or Java running in my browser, so you'd have to give me something that will infect me uh, using JavaScript, which I am not concerned with. Uh, I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'm saying that if it was to happen, antivirus wouldn't help. And if that's the case, then I shouldn't be surfing the web at all. So it would have to be a, a glitch in my browser, a bug in my browser, uh, that once known, hopefully would be patched as soon as I do an update. And again, if we don't know about it, if it's a zero day attack, there is no defense against it. And that's kind of my point. Uh, if you're really paranoid, you can use script blockers. But um, again, that's the challenge.
comment below. If you think that you can just infect my computer with a website, uh, go ahead and put a link below and I'll check out the link. And as always, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Have a great day.